Hey folks, so this is my last video, as far as I'm aware, of information that I obtained about Tears of the Kingdom from multiple sources. First off, big shout out to Mike Odyssey, who was the original source on all of this stuff. He made a video uh, with everything sort of combined. I will put that link down in the description like I've done in all my prior videos. I also went ahead and got this information confirmed from a second source. Of course, we can't really even talk about who these sources are just to protect people and make sure people don't lose their jobs. This information seems to be true. Obviously, I don't have firsthand knowledge of this stuff. It's secondhand, but it is stuff that does seem extremely plausible, which is why we've been talking about it. Obviously, we talked about the GameStop stuff and the Tears of the Kingdom Switch OLED thing. We have a, we'll have a link down in the description to that video yesterday. We then went ahead and talked about how the game might have dungeons and stuff like that. And then the final video we did yesterday that you might have missed uh, was about just some other aspects of the game, including Link's new abilities and some information about that. Just kind of how you obtain them, not necessarily new information about how they work. Today, though, we actually have some new stuff that you might have figured out by watching the trailer, but it might not be obvious because it wasn't confirmed. And this has to do with basically weapon crafting. Yes, folks, weapon crafting is in the the game. So let's get into the information I have. First off, the blue flames that we saw at the ancient tech labs in Breath of the Wild are completely gone. They might be using some sort of different energy to power the labs if the labs are used at all. But yeah, the blue flames are gone. No idea why. Hopefully there's some story explanation in the game for why the blue flames have gone away. The green spirals that we've actually seen in the latest trailer that appear in different areas of Hyrule are actually warp points. So if you remember in uh, Breath of the Wild, you would unlock a shrine without even beating the shrine. You could warp to it or you could warp to various towers. These are just some of the warp points that exist in the game. They are not, I guess, what people were speculating that, you know, those are points where you get in there and it shoots you up to the sky. Well, each one of these spiral points seem to be around key locations, which seems to make sense that these would just be the replacement for warp points from shrines. So... I do think that that's really, really interesting. I have no idea how we obviously unlock these warp points, but that appears to be what they are. Now, there were repairs of parts of Hyrule done in the time jump that we talked about earlier that exist between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. And this is before Ganondorf does his thing with the Blood Moon. Specifically, the sources said that there are some repairs in the Great Plateau area. Look, we just got to wait till we get the game to confirm that stuff. But it would make sense if there were some repairs happening in Hyrule before things went bad again. Now we get into the actual crafting aspect of this game. And here we get to talk about first the Bokoblins and the Moblins and stuff. You can kind of infer this stuff already. But when you look at their horns and, and you look at the stuff jutting out of their head, it starts to look a lot more like parts of weapons and blades and various things. So when you beat them, they not only drop their typical monster parts, they also drop those parts that are used for weapons crafting and all of that. Uh, that's really, really interesting. The weapon crafting is actually pretty advanced because you can even customize your arrows with different monster parts. One such thing we actually saw apparently was when he shot that homing arrow, that homing arrow actually had an eye on the end of it and it was the eye chasing the enemy. So really interesting uh, idea and I wonder what other custom arrows we're able to make. I mean, I assume we still have ice, fire, bomb arrows, you know, electric arrows, but I'm very curious like what we can do with monster parts and arrows. I think that's a really neat evolution. And yes, folks, I have heard that breakable weapons are still a thing. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people were hoping it would go away. But with our ability to craft weapons, I wasn't able to get this confirmed, but it would be nice if they added the ability to obviously repair them. Again, this was not from our sources. They just said we could craft the weapons and breakable weapons are still a thing. But I would love the ability to repair. If we can craft weapons, why can't we repair weapons? I really hope that's something that they decide to explore in this game. Another custom weapon we saw that you can build was that cannon weapon when Link slams it down and it shoots at the stone talus. Look, these are just obvious things that you might think you already figured out but technically weren't confirmed. I'm just kind of throwing it out there. Look, this information is, you know, really interesting to me that we even have this information coming out. 
I can't wait for Nintendo's next trailer. I can't wait for them to announce the Tears of the Kingdom Switch OLED, which I think is pretty obvious at this point. It should be announced next month. Pre-order should be being taken next month because Splatoon and Pokemon had about a 70-day uh, announcement period for their special editions uh, OLEDs. So it should make sense there. Also, I'm just excited for Tears of the Kingdom. Look... I've been making a ton of Tears of the Kingdom videos, and it kind of feels like I just can't get away from it. I love it. I have a lot of other news I want to talk about, so later today we will have another video coming out that is going to feature other news happening in the Nintendo world, because there's quite a bit. Heck, maybe we even throw in some more, some news happening outside of Nintendo, because there's a lot of, there's just a lot of stuff happening, and I feel like all I've made for like two, three weeks now is Tears of the Kingdom content, uh, and that's awesome and amazing. I told you guys we were going to have a ton of Tears of the Kingdom content heading into the release of the game, but now I feel like we need to step back a bit and start getting the rest of the news covered because I feel like I'm falling behind, and I don't like falling behind. I want to keep you guys up to date on the latest and greatest in gaming, specifically Nintendo, and I feel like some of you guys that rely on my channel for most of your news might be missing out on the fact that there is actually a lot of other news happening that isn't related to Zelda. I'm a Zelda guy, so I tend to focus on the Zelda when I have to. So it's time to get back into all the other great stuff happening around the big N. I want to thank you guys for obviously tuning in. Let me know if you've been enjoying these Tears of the Kingdom videos. I Again, I don't expect to have any more exclusive sort of news like this or semi-exclusive shared news with Mike Odyssey. This is just one of those things that I just happen to be fortunate this time around. I've had early access to Zelda news before reporting on stuff like about the Skyward Sword story back in my Zelda Informer days. We got information on that uh, pretty much like four months before the game came out. And we shared it, and people called me a liar, and then it ended up being true. So that's just the way it goes. Every now and then I'll get information like this. But you guys let me know what you think about the in-totality collection of Tears of the Kingdom news we've had since the actual trailer at the Nintendo Direct, the thing sense, the screenshots, the official art, what the hell is that new slate that, uh, that Zelda's holding that the official Zelda team on their Twitter account wanted us to take note of. Does that mean she's playable? That's a whole thing we haven't even talked about. We've talked about how maybe she dies, but is she playable before she dies? Is she playable after she dies? What is happening? I have no idea. You guys give me your thoughts and theories all about Tears of the Kingdom down in the comments below, and I will respond to the ones that I find to be the most interesting. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch you in that next video.